Welcome. I'd like to call to order the annual village meeting of Woodstock, Vermont at approximately 737 on March 17th. No, I mean April 21st. No, I mean June 9th. That's where we are. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Kahn. My fellow trustees are Carrie Agin, Anna Di Natale, and Kerry Cole, who's in the front seat down there. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with our new town manager, Bill Kerbin is with us. And, and our village clerk, Don Wheeler, is sitting at this end of the table. Um, last year's moderator, and soon to be this year's, uh, in all likelihood, is Greg Camp at the podium over there. Um, so um, at this point, I'd like to turn the uh, meeting over. Um, we need to elect uh, a moderator for a one-year term. Um, if I have a motion from the floor for, to elect a moderator. Yes, Allison. Yes, I would elect, uh, make the motion that we elect the moderator for one year. All right, motion made by Allison Clarkson. Is there a second? And if you raise your hand, please say who you are because we can't really see with these lights in our eyes. Yes. Brenda Blakeman. Bre second, Brenda Blakeman. Um, okay, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and we've turned the meeting over to our new moderator, Greg. New at all. There you go. Actually, I made, I made you the morning after the presentation because you elected me so quickly. Is that all right? That's, That's fine. fine. That's fine. I'll go over a couple of brief details about the meeting, but before we do that, we'd like to take the moment to pause and uh, give a few minutes to Chief Robbie Blish, Chief of Police, for a swearing-in ceremony, and then we'll begin the rest of the regular meeting. Robbie and... Thank you everyone for coming tonight and uh, we have a little special ceremony. We have uh, two new officers that we have hired with the uh, Woodstock Police Department. If you want to come down Caleb and Al. We have uh, Officer uh, Caleb McIntyre who comes to us with a corrections background in Vermont, uh, California and New Hampshire. And we also have Officer Alan Patterson who has uh, a long history of law enforcement retiring from the Hanover Police Department uh, a few years ago. And uh, he's gonna be with us part-time and Caleb is, is our new full-time officer. Uh, so I, I thought it'd be a great idea to introduce these new officers to the community that they're gonna be serving so that people get to know them. And uh, the trustees were kind enough to, to allow it. So without further ado, I'll ask, um, our new town manager, Mr. Kerbin, to swear them in. And then after that, they'll have um, their spouses, their wives come down and uh, pin their, their badges on for the swearing in. Thank you, Chief Bush. If you want to raise your right hand for me, please. As the duly appointed manager of the village of Woodstock, Vermont, under the provisions of Title 24 VSA, Chapter 37, Section 1232, in section 1238, in chapter 39, section 1315, under the authority given me by the provisions of Title 24 VSA, chapter 37, section 12369A, and chapter 55, section 1931, I do hereby appoint Caleb Durrell McIntyre and Alan J. Patterson, Sr., as police officers and an in and for said village of all the powers and duties appertaining to said police officers under the charter and bylaws of the village of Woodstock and the laws of the state of Vermont. Repeat after me, please. I, state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the duties of police officer and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Congratulations, gentlemen. Welcome.
Thank you all for your indulgence of that. It was a nice ceremony, and we welcome the new officers. Good work. Um, again, my name is Greg Camp, and you just elected me moderator. Um, if you're following the meeting along, the outline or what we do at the meeting for village meeting is we follow page 13 and 14 in the booklet that was a warning handed out four months ago when we were going to have the meeting. And we follow it down by articles, and then we have other business at the very end of the meeting. With the one exception that the budget figures did change, so if you did not get, there's a new handout out front with all the revised budget figures. So if you didn't get that, you'll need to take a little break, and I can move slowly with these first procedural things, um, so that you'll be able to follow along. So I'll be reading warnings. We'll be following Robert's rules. Village residents are the only folks that can vote and speak unless we recognize someone else that wishes to be recognized to, to make a statement. Um, when you do make a motion, um, and if you would please try to move articles along to at least make the motion so we can talk about them, please state your name and try to state it loudly and clearly so that Don, our clerk, who's been so wonderful all these years, is able to uh, put that in the minutes for next year's meeting and for accuracy. I think I covered most everything, didn't I? Okay. Um, there were a few changes, if you are uh, not only in the date, but in the figure. So if you notice, I'm not following the old booklet exactly. It's very close, but nonetheless. Um, also, I just wanted to thank everyone. I noticed we're all wearing masks and doing social distancing. I very much appreciate that. I've been at some meetings in other areas of the New England and so forth where it's not followed as strictly and, and I found it's, it's, it's done very well around Woodstock, including in the grocery stores and everywhere. I do take my mask off just when I'm speaking and then we'll put it back on when I approach anyone. But again, thank you all for following those, uh, those standards and keeping us, keeping us a healthy community. So um, the village meeting. The citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters of the village of Woodstock Vermont, County of Windsor, are hereby warned to meet at the Town Hall, which is here, on the 9th day of June 2020 at 7 a.m., continuing until 7 p.m. for the purpose of transacting during that time, voting by Australian ballot. That did happen. I was told we had a record turnout, which is wonderful news. Um, I do not have those tallies yet, but we will announce them hopefully later in the meeting when we get to that. This, I continue, the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters in the village of Woodstock, County of Windsor, State of Vermont are hereby warned to meet at the Woodstock Town Hall in said village on the 9th day of June 2020 at 7.30 p.m. to act upon the following articles. And that would be the beginning of this meeting with the articles. Article 1, to elect the officers for the ensuing year upcoming. Um, moderator, you already did, so that I was able to start the meeting. Thank you for that and your confidence. Um, we now have clerk for a one-year term. I would entertain a motion for a clerk for one-year term. Blurt your name right out. Alison Clarkson, I would vote that <coughs> uh, Don. Don Wheeler be reappointed to re-elected as our clerk. Do I have a second? Get it? What was the name? Chris Floyd. Got it? Okay. Any other nomination? Chris Lloyd. Oh, Chris. Seeing none and not daring to have any others. <laughs> He's been wonderful all these years. We thank him. Um, I'll <laughs> entertain a vote. All those in favor of electing Don Wheeler as our clerk of the village, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by same sign. Okay. Motion carries. Wonderful. Um, trustee for a three year term and trustee for a two-year term were both Australian ballot. We will put that off. We will, as I say, hopefully know the results later. Treasurer for a one-year term and entertain a motion for that. I would, uh, I would move uh, Candace Coburn. We have Candace Coburn put into nomination. A second. Name? Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Any other nominations for treasurer for a one-year term? Hearing none, we will enter Candace Coburn in for a vote for a one-year term as village treasurer. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Congratulations, Candace. Trustee of public funds, another one-year term. Motion. Oh. Uh, I'm Jill Davis. I'm nominating Chris Lloyd for trustee of public funds. Got that? 
Chris Lloyd. Don. Second. I'll second. Jeff Kahn, second. Any other nominations? Seeing none, we will move that uh, Chris be um, elected trustee of public funds for a one-year term for the Village Woodstock. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, side sign. There we go, it carries. Auditors, we're looking for two names, and we can do them both at the same time, if that's okay, for a one-year term. If we can get, anyone want to make a motion for? I would move that we uh, nominate uh, Charlie Kimball, because he has so little on his plate, <laughs> and, uh, and Corwin Sharp, because he did such a good job for us last year. Sounds wonderful. Second? I'll second. Name, sorry? Oh. Oh, gotcha. Between the mass and the glare, it's hard. Thank you. Any other nominations? No one else jumping in. Okay. What's that? Anybody else. <laughs> I heard that. Okay, all those in favor of electing Charlie and Corwin to serve another one year term as our village auditors signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Aye. Hey. <laughs> Motion carries. Sorry, John. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> okay, last for these um, fire wardens. We need three names for this. Yet another motion. I would move that we uh, nominate uh, Joel Carey, Edmund Page, and Kent McFarland to uh, as fire wardens for another year. Any other no uh, second? A second. We got Brenda already. Thank you. Any other names to be entered for fire warden? Okay. All those in favor of the motion of those three same fire wardens serving another year for the village of Woodstock, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And there we go. Well done. Thank you for that. We'll move on to Article 2, to receive and act upon the reports of the village officers. So those are the reports, not the budget, but the reports printed in your budget, uh, in your, in the leaflet, the, the whole warning, I guess it's called. Anyone? Well, first of all, accept a motion to carry those, to, res to uh, act upon them as received. Charlie Kimball, second. Brenda, okay, second. Okay, any questions on the reports or comments or anything needed? And we'll get to the budget and there'll be more questions, okay? All those in favor of Article 2 as presented, the report, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Article 3, as we zip through these, to fix the annual compensation for elected village officers, moderator, $50 per meeting, treasurer, $1,500 per year, clerk, $400 per year, and trustees, $750 per year. Can I have a motion to bring that on the floor? Brenda, Blake, okay, second. Jill Davies. <laughs> Jill Davies. Jill Davies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she told her. Okay, Jill, seconds. Um, any questions, changes, anything on Article 3? All those in favor of Article 3 as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Article 3 carries as presented. <laughs> Article 4 to see if the village of Woodstock will vote to collect <coughs> village general taxes on real estate and all other taxes levied through the treasurer under the provisions of Title 32 VSA Chapter 1, 133 and fix the date of payments as November 6, 2020 and May 7, 2021. Can I get a motion on Article 4 as presented? Allison, Allison Parson. Parson, I move Article 4. Second. Brenda, caught up to that. Questions, comments on Article 4? All those in favor of Article 4 as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Article 4 carries as presented. Article 5, to see if the village <coughs> will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Trustees to borrow money, if necessary, in anticipation of taxes for fiscal year 2020-21 to defray current expenses and debt of the village. Can I get a motion for Article 5? 
I didn't see who, but. Chris Lloyd. Oh, thank you, Chris. Moves. Chris Lloyd moves second. Brenda, second. Just making sure we get it all. Okay. Uh, questions, comments on Article 5? All those in favor of Article 5 as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Article 5 carries as presented. Okay, now we can maybe have some fun if I can read this all right. So there are figures, if you're looking at what's printed, um, some of the figures changed, and that's what's in the, the handout you got. Um, so it'll be just a little bit different as I read Article 6. To see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,298,540 and raise by taxation the sum of $548,042 right? okay. <laughs> to pay the current expenses and debt of the village. Um, broken down as general government, $250,680. Boards and agencies, $102,300. Fire Department and STR Enforcement, $4,700. Village Highway, $45,000. Village Police, $225,562. And Capital Reserve Spending of $1,000, giving us the total of $1,298,540. So we can have discussion if someone wants to move Article 6 as read. Second? Yeah. Who, who said? Jill Davies. She got it? Okay, and a second? Oh, yeah. Rachel Kahn. Okay, she got you. Thank you, Anna. Um, so before I move to approve that, that is on the floor, and we traditionally do some explanation and or question time with the budget. So I'm going to turn things back over to your wonderful trustees so you may ask questions and get some explanation. All right, I'd like to start with general government, but um, I'd also like to just say in advance that you will find that most of the decrease in the revised budget is in the uh, police department section, and that was done uh, with uh, cooperation of Chief Blish and our town manager, uh, Bill Kerbin. Um, and um, so that's where you'll see most of the changes from what's in the original warning. Um, I'm going to go through the general government section, and there's very little there uh, that's changed um, from the original warning other than uh, some small items uh, under community television of $500 or so, and then another little section of professional services. So basically, we, we only dropped $900 from what you're seeing if you're looking at the original warning. Um, there's nothing of great significance to report here. Um, uh, we've really kept things pretty level. And if there are any questions from the floor um, on the general government section, I'd be happy to uh, try to answer them. And if, if not, uh, I'd like to move on to uh, village boards and agencies, which Kerry Cole will uh, speak to. We're now on page, tw page 24. In the original, in the original, um, in the it's revised. It's the front page of the revised one that's out front, as far as general government, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, boards and agencies, we are seeing a decrease, and that is primarily because Michael Brands um, has retired, and his replacement is coming on at a lower pay rate. Any questions? Um, if there are no questions, we'll move on. Um, but before we hit the, the highway department, are you going to talk to fire department? Or do you want me to? All right. So under fire department is something new. As you may be aware, um, last year um, we created uh, the first short-term rental ordinance in the, for the village of Woodstock in the state of Vermont. Um, and in anticipation of what might have taken place, we created this budget. Now it doesn't look like it's going to be accurate uh, because fewer people have signed up, have registered to run short-term rentals due to the situation that, that we're all experiencing. 
So this is, we're going to have to play this along and see, see how this works out. But I will say that if there's less revenue because fewer people have signed up, there will also be less expenses in terms of, um, in terms of enforcement. So uh, ho hopefully it'll balance out. But those figures that we're looking at there were guesswork that I, I consider to be pretty off. At this point, I think we've had eight homes register in the village for short-term rental. So, uh, and we have until the end of June, by the way, for that to occur before if you try to be a short-term rental and you haven't registered, you will incur fines, which unlike in the past, will be easy to enforce, much like a traffic ticket. Uh, so I recommend anybody who is contemplating uh, having a short-term rental in this next year to uh, please come in and register in the town offices. Um, so that's what that's about. Now I turn it this next. Uh, is there a question about that? I know it's hard to see. That's yeah. Quiet. Yes, question? Yeah, yeah. Go. So according to this, um, the enforcement of short, short term rental would become under the fire department. Is that correct? Well, because uh, our health officer and our, and our fire chief will be administering that primarily. Can you kind of, Jeff, can you kind of just uh, go over the process of how that, how you're going to enforce whatever regulations uh, applicable? Well, anyone who registers, uh, first of all, um, has to list out uh, what, how they've complied with uh, the requirements in terms of safety features, and they, their homes will be inspected to make sure that that's true. And then if there are complaints, from neighbors, for instance, um, and so forth, he will be the person to go and and uh, address those complaints. And if he needs to enforce, it will be done uh, in a manner similar, as I said, to a, a, a ticket, um, and much easier to um, enforce than going to superior court and having to hire a lawyer, which is often the only re recourse there is going, th going through enforcement in zoning um, which is how we used to do it, and which is how the town is still doing it. So um, we're hoping that we'll get a violation, or if there's a complaint, it goes to the fire department or the police department, correct? Go, yes. yes. Or the, the, the police, police department, department can also be involved, but it goes directly to the fire department first. And when it comes to issuing a ticket, uh, David Green will issue the ticket, not the police department? It could be either one. Oh, it could be either one. David could send a police officer to do that. Thanks. Sure. Any, any other questions about that short-term rental situation? Okay, then let's move on to uh, the uh, Village uh, Highway Department and then the Village Police Department. Village Highway Department is simply about turning over the, uh, the highway, the state aid to highway that uh, we receive in the village we turn over to the town ever since we joined the, uh, the departments and we only have one highway department in Woodstock now. So that's pretty straightforward. The village police department, uh, is, I'll turn all that over to Carrie Egan to address. How are you doing today, everybody? Thank you for being here. Um, thankfully, uh, Jeff, along with the, with the chief and our town manager, were able to bring down the budget. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty much exactly the same. Nothing has really changed. Uh, I think we're really lucky to have a police department here, and it's, it's nice and we'll to see them more out on the streets as the weather gets warmer. But um, nothing has really changed, except that they did drop the budget about twenty-five to $26,000. Yeah. So, um, are there any questions about the police budget? Yes. Sir, I know you're saying they dropped the budget, but I'm looking at the handout, and I don't see the drop that you're talking about. Oh, because if you had the original, you would see that things came down. So um, up in line 17, operation supplies went down 200. Um, they've dropped uh, office supplies by 200. Uh, travel and transportation by 225. Um, oh, by 25. From the original budget that we came up with. 
and then 150 down by the um, employer paid benefits. And they took down salaries and wages by 500. It was um, 6,500 originally. Uh, employer paid benefits there. Travel and transport both came down 100. Communication with the bigger one um, was uh, that we dropped a thousand dollars for fuel. Fuel is pretty inexpensive right now. And then there was the cruiser, correct? Correct. Well, there are a few. There are a few others. But. Right, but it equals about that number of like twenty-five thousand. Right. The, t the two biggest ones, as Carrie's saying, are the $15,000, because we're not going ahead with uh, a cruiser in this coming year. Um, we're not putting aside money for that at this time. Instead, we're extending warranties on, on, on an existing cruiser. And the other significant drop is uh, on line 23, uh, which previously was $8,000 for uh, credit card meter repairs and replacements. We dropped that to $45,24 to level fund it with what we actually uh, incurred in terms of expenses in the past year. And there are a number of other small drops, but overall about $25,000, as Carrie said, um, which is the biggest reason why a, the entire budget is now going to be 1.37% uh, lower in terms of what we need to raise in taxes than uh, the previous year. We're, and we're very happy we're able to achieve that this year. The, uh, you'll see also on page, um, let's see what page the uh, tax rate is on. It's in your handout, the tax rate. It's somewhere in the book is in the, as well. But the tax rate, the grand total, uh, is going to be 0 0.1950. You multiply that by uh, $100 worth of property uh, valuation, and you get your exact tax. That's 0 0.1950, and last year it was... Uh, as I said, 1.37% uh, higher than that. It's 0.1976 last year. And that's really the bottom, the bottom line of what we accomplished this year. Any questions about the budgets that we've now gone over? Seeing no further questions or discussions, we are on Article 6, which is the, the budget, basically, as opposed to repeating the whole thing. Um, all those in favor of Article 6, as stated, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Um, Article 6 carries, which is the budget. Thank you for your questions and your interest. Article 7, to see if the village will vote to appropriate and raise by taxation the sum of $5,000 for the care of planting of trees. Can I get a motion? Allison Parks. Allison Parks and I move Article 7. Second. Carrie Cole. Carrie Cole. Okay. Any questions on Article 7? We might, we might want to ask Don to tell us what he might have plans for. Yes, Don is our tree warden. Don, if you would use the microphone. Please. Yeah, for uh, several years now, we have not spent much on any planting or care of trees. It's been minimal, and we've been trying to get a realistic budget figure so we can do some of this. Over the last several years, several trees on the green have been removed from Dutch elm disease and other problems, and we're hoping to replace several trees on the green and come up with a master plan for other planting around the village. Um, part of this might go toward where uh, the state is in a concern over emerald ash borer now, and we might have to spend some money to do research and um, figure out a plan on what we're going to do if emerald ash borer comes to Woodstock. So um, replanting and uh, beautification of the trees around the village are the main goals of this money. Yes, so I'd like to propose an amendment to the motion because I don't think $5,000 is enough. 
that there's a, there's a buy by trees these days, and if you're going to have to do a master plan and buy trees, I think you need to have more money. What are you suggesting? John, do you have a plan yet that needs to be funded? Uh, I don't have a formal plan created, but uh, I can get that done and uh, get it to you in a uh, trustees meeting in July so that you have a closer idea of what the expenditures will be. So if we, if I made a motion for 20000 and and then we didn't need that money, what would happen to the money? I think it would be carried over to the following year plan for future years. This is a going to be an ongoing situation where trees are going to need care, removal, and planting every year. So I think a, a long-term budget where we could carry money over would be ideal. So I'll make a, I'll make a So you, I'm sorry, you're yeah. saying you're going to make a motion for 20000 So we're looking at amending the motion to the same reading but to a different dollar figure of 20000 did you say? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, that'll take a second to amend the motion. Anyone want to second the amendment? Second, so we would first vote oh, to see if there's any further discussion because we do have a second. If there's further discussion, to amend the motion to read the same but with a different dollar figure of 20,000. Joe, you discussion? I'm, I'm wondering if it's appropriate to, to um, suggest a number, but I really have a good idea. I want to think about that. Yeah, but Joe, I think that if we only go at five, that's where we, that's all that they have. But if you go higher, you're better off having it go roll over than not having the money at all. Is what yeah, I, I understand. I care, I care, I understand, but it just seems to me to pick a number and then say, let's try to hit it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't sit well to me. Well, yes. that. Unless you really know so how many things are going to cost. I mean, if we buy a new truck, we don't want the truck to get a So are you, are you looking for a clarification? Sorry. In the past year, what have, what have we said? Um, I don't have those numbers right with me tonight. But, um, uh, approximately uh, to replace a tree and there's at least six trees um, and probably ten that need to be replaced in the green. Each tree is between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars and um, that does not include any uh, maintenance of the trees. Um, a lot of the trees have been neglected in the village. They need pruning, fertilizing in certain cases and uh, the uh, you know the, the twenty thousand dollar budget could easily be hit if proper maintenance of the trees was promoted and continued because um, things have been neglected for many years. It's been minimal maintenance. A couple of years we've done some volunteer work from the end and all to just do some basic pruning because there isn't an established budget. Okay. I could. We have someone. Hi, uh, Doug Rand. Thanks, man. Um, so, a quick question about should the tree warden have a line item in the budget for expenditures relative to feeding the trees and pruning trees and things like that? Where does that, where does that, where do those funds presently come from? Yeah, that's a, that's a great area. Um, in, the, in the past, uh, when we needed something, I, gone to the municipal manager and asked for funding and he comes up with money somewhere and I was never really sure where it did come from. So if we did have a line item, it would certainly be helpful. Be, yeah, it would. Because, you know, there are trees that abutters of old property or old town property request that the, the town dig down and, and, you know, unfortunately money doesn't grow on trees. So, um, however, the... Um, the, the, more about the kind of the master plan, and I realize you don't have anything to do, but it, what's, it's the vision, perhaps, to restore the tree to its, you know, former glory of being ringed with trees and things like that. 
yeah, or a study pattern, it can never, I believe, have as many trees as it did originally because they would choke themselves out and with the current activities that are occurring on the green with farmers markets and all, you just can't have that many trees there and have them do well if they're getting... You can't have that middle, maybe around the side. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that was the idea with the elms circling the green, but because of Dutch elm disease, that whole plan failed. And uh, we can gradually do that with uh, a variety of trees rather, rather than one variety so we don't have a lot culture and have that same problem again. Yeah. So that's. Uh, but, now, it has been for quite some time. I believe it, it's always been a separate motion, and I do not know why. For 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 trees and beautification, it's never been a line. I, I can't as moderator. I can't answer why. But it's been that way for as long as I can. Right. It should be well, like, well, like mowing the lawn. It's too bad the circle came up right after that. Right after we passed the budget. Yeah. But um, yeah, it'd be, for next year, we should we should think about maybe incorporating that. Into well, base, basically, special articles do change the budget. It changes the tax rate. Correct. Changes the well, tax rate. I, I believe, if I may, hear you, what he's saying is that perhaps in the future, the, the yeah. trustees might at least consider making it a line item. Yeah. So that's more of a comment because the budget's already passed, correct? It's a good thought. Yeah. A good comment. But I mean, in the past, the budget as far as the. So, any, any, we're on the amendment of the motion still right now. Keep with Robert's rules. Uh, Allison Clarkson, I would support Doug's idea of making the trees a line item in the budget. It's uh, they are a constant need, and Don has underspent wildly, and the need is only growing. And with Emerald Ash Borer coming our way, it's not a question of if; it's a question of when it comes. Uh, we're going to be in major need. It sounds like this five thousand dollars was fairly arbitrary and not enough in the first place to accomplish all the things you wanted to accomplish this year, Don. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And so uh, you just take it what we've done in the past is take some money and do what we can and uh, try to get more of the next year. So so with a twenty thousand dollar appropriation you could actually accomplish the things that you set as objectives. That's correct. Thank you. Last year it was uh, $4,000. This year we made it 5000 but clearly it's not enough to accomplish what we're, you're talking about, what Don's talking about. Bill, is there another area of the budget where you would see funds like this coming out of? For maintenance like this? Possibly, yeah. but I can't. Yeah, no. What part of the budget is like mowing the green? Why would it not come out of that? Banding on the trees every year and never getting ahead of it of the game just doesn't make sense at the top of Well, there's a moment, there's a motion out there. Right. Yes, my territory. I don't want to jump the gun, but we're going to have that same conversation in the next article, which seems to be a recurring item as well. So it seems like the line that's called landscaping beautification and seasonal decoration will be something that's going to happen every year. The seasonal to me is repetitive. Well, the next article addresses something different, Kareem, but we can talk about that when we get to it. So, let's do it. Anna, use the mic. And if, Charlie, uh, Charlie Kimball, I'm, I'm going to bring up something that's been going on page 37 from last year's meeting, in which case, Bob's included that this should be a line item in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Bob's quoted as saying he's going to work to come up with a plan. So I just, I'm thinking next year we don't want to have the same exact conversation because it's this is Groundhog Day a little bit. So okay. I'm just trying to figure out how can we make sure that this doesn't happen again uh, as the trustees. Can we trust that this will be incorporated in the budget next year? Yeah. We will do so. Thank you, Charlie. Did you have another question on the well, amendment, Charlie? I mean, maybe I can make a suggestion that um, we appropriate money based upon what the budget that, that John submits not to exceed a number. Maybe that would satisfy what we would need. That would end up being like a, a friendly amendment to the amendment. 
but I don't think there's anybody. I'm looking for a little guidance from the trustees on to how to affect the tax rate. And, you know, is there any guidance the trustees want to give this amendment before we put it to a vote? Not really. We're shooting in the dark. And, uh, I don't think $20,000 is, is out of line if uh, the majority of the folks here uh, would like to see that their tax money go that in that direction. I, I'm sure it could be spent. So I, I, would, I wouldn't amend that figure personally. No, no, the 20, 20, the 20, the 20. That's what I, because that's what we, the way, if I understand Robert's rules correctly, we'll vote on the amendment of 20,000 and then go back to. So can we maybe massage the language a bit up to 20,000 pending a submitted if plan? It's okay with the person that made the amending motion. Up to 20, okay. All right. So what we're voting on right now is to amend, we're on Article 7, right? There we go. Yes. Taxation, village, make sure, yeah. Mention the next one. I want to make sure I was in the same same place. Um, Article seven, which involves the tree planting and care, um, we are amending that motion to read in the financial end, 20, up to twenty thousand dollars as the warden sees the need. Does that Is, sound close? I, I don't know how this works. So use the mic. I don't know how this works, so um, just correct me, but is there part of that amendment that needs to also put it into the budget so that it doesn't show up as a special article in the future? I don't Well, if we make it a because line they're, item they're next asking year. For that. Yeah. We'll make it a line item next year, Anna. Yeah, I think that's more of a statement that needs to be followed up on. Bill's got it totally written down. Okay. Okay. But I just want to make sure it happens. No, thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. So to raise that figure on Article 7 to 20,000 as needed, under the trustees and the tree warden. All those in favor of amending motion seven? Aye. Aye. Article seven, sorry. Um, all those opposed? The ayes have it. So now we'll go back to article seven and it will be to see if the village will vote to appropriate and raise by taxation the sum of up to $20,000 um, to be determined by the tree warden and the village trustees for the care and planting of trees. So actually that's been amended. It's already on the floor. Sorry, I had to think for a second. Um, any further discussion on the article as amended? All those in favor of Article 7 as amended signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 7 carries as amended. Article 8, to see if the village will vote to raise and appropriate from taxes, <clears throat> excuse me, the sum of $5,000 for the purpose of village beautification projects and seasonal decorations. This money is to be spent at the discretion of the Board of Trustee, Village Trustees. Can I get a motion to put Article 8 into discussion? Got it? And second? Second. C. N. McElroy. Good. He's got gotcha. you. Don't forget to state your names, even though Anna's doing a good job for us. Um, <laughs> any discussion on Article 8, the beautification? Article? So just for clarification, what we've used this money for in the past are, are two things, primarily in, in recent years. Uh, and that's why the word seasonal decorations are there. In the, in the winter time, starting around holiday time, uh, we've uh, contributed money towards uh, the lighting of the trees in the village. And in the summer, uh, the planting of the, uh, the flower baskets that are on the light poles in, in the village. And that's where we have used this money in the past. It truly helps to offset that cost ending up on the store owners and, and, and also the chamber from having to run around to find the money for it. Because, and especially now, I'm sure that the last thing that the store owners are thinking about is how I'm going to come up with money for those things to make it still look beautiful, although it does, but with that, yes. So, uh, spring and summer happens every year, and so do the seasonal festivities. So, is it, are we envisaging that we're going to be voting on this article every year, and I'm going to bring up the same question, why isn't that also part of the budget if we expect that that's going to happen every year? Because I sincerely doubt that one year we're going to say we're not going to decorate the town. We could make it a line item. 
to save this time right now. <laughs> I think it makes great sense to have that be a line item as well. So I think we can just make a note for Article 7 and 8 should definitely be and not just in the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, a line item for next year. Mm -hmm. Is that? I think years ago they just needed something to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I, I, I can't remember for sure, but when in years past, I think it was to give control to the folks out there because not everybody, they glaze over the line items sometimes. It's, it's pretty it's recent. In my memory a little bit, yeah. It's pretty recent that we're, we have this at all. I think so it's quite occurred that way. In fact, it was Jill who popped it. To, to five thousand dollars, not very long ago. Right. Yeah, it was. Like, it was considerably, it was considerably <laughs> less. <laughs> so, so I think um, it's maturing along, and I think it's a good point by everyone out there. That just I'm, I'm, I'm not discussing the item itself as far as Correct. dollars. I'm discussing just the principle of. Correct. Yeah, right. no. Point well taken, I think, for the trustees. Yes, thank you. Next year, okay. Um, so, as presented for this year, Article 8, as presented, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Article 8 carries as presented, and we will see it next year as a line item. Article 9, you're going to make my job easy and quick. To see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of paying the trustee of public funds for services rendered and approve such expenditures from income of the trust funds. A motion on Article 9, please. Anyone? I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay. Second? A second. Carrie. Carrie. Carrie Cole. Carrie and Carrie. Boom, boom. Got them? Carrie Cole. Um, any questions or comments on Article 9 as presented? All those in favor of Article 9 as presented signify by saying aye. Uh, Opposed? Same sign. Article 9 carries as presented. Article 10. To see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of auditing the public trust funds and approve such expenditures from income of the trust fund. Motion on Article 10 as presented. Where we go? Thank you. Second from here. Questions, comments? Article 10. All those in favor of Article 10 as presented signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 10 carries as presented. Article 11. To act upon other business that may legally come before this village meeting. Any legal business? We're going to make some comments here in small moment. Before we ask, go ahead. Is it, is it in the form of a motion, or is it uh, somewhat, or, or, I mean, we can allow comments to understand. It's not really citizens' comments, it's the... I can't hear you. Right here. Right. I, oh. What do you think, Ray? Is this... Is this is what I think. Later? Okay, so later. Okay. That's all. After the annual meeting, there will be... Does that sound more appropriate? Okay. Well, I don't know what's the, the subject, but yeah. Yeah, it needs to happen today. Okay. Does that sound right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Okay. Let's do that after Just the meeting. Sure. Anyone else? Oh, thank you. As I breeze right over in here, I can do those and then there's one other thing, too. Um, so back to the Australian ballot, there were two votes going on. Um, trustee for two-year position, we had Daphne Lowe running as Daphne Lowe, and had 128 people show up to vote, which is wonderful. Um, that vote wins for Daphne Lowe. On the three-year term for trustee, we had Brenda Blakeman and Seton, is it Matt Boy? Yes. Okay, I'm pronouncing that correct. And um, by a vote of uh, four votes, Seton Matt Boy wins that election. So those are the two. I believe they will be involved with a reorganization meeting immediately following this. But before we adjourn, Jeff, did you have one thing, or was that going to be after adjournment? Uh, 
No, right now, okay. um, I would just like to um, recognize Carrie Cole, who is leaving our board, and she has been a wonderful contributing member to, to this board. The happiest news for us is that she's on the select board, and she's been like split in two ever since uh, our original annual meeting was uh, delayed. And uh, Carrie, we thank you. It's been a pleasure having you with us. We have uh, something for you from your fellow trustees, which I'd like to pass down to you for your, for your enjoyment. And, uh, and the great pleasure is that we're still going to have joint meetings and you'll still be voting alongside us. But on a there was none any other business to come before this meeting seeing none i will entertain a motion to adjourn the annual village meeting charlie kimball's move second allison clarkson second all those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed same sign we are adjourned from the village annual meeting thank you all for coming to that thank you. this part thank you very thank you much thank you for your participation and uh, we will shortly resume uh, with the uh, regular village meeting following this.